suburbs. They already have it. So it's just the center of the city. I think what we're I think we'd be talking I think we'd be talking about the city, whether we're talking about the entire city or just pockets of the city is open to debate. There are communities that have had resentment among people really mad that some people are going to be in there for free. And it was a political problem. Ooh. So I think ultimately I believe that you could you could what I would like to see is you just spoke about how you want they were going to charge two hundred dollars for a commercial building like this. Um, if we could if we could do this citywide and also market it um, at a low cost for businesses, um, I believe that it could be an economic development engine as well. So I think there are other things that we could do with the municipal network, which is what Chattanooga did. There are other things we can do with the municipal network that could really put Rochester on the map in other ways. Um, so yes, I, I don't think we should talk about the suburbs <laughs> um, as it relates to this, but I don't think anything should necessarily be off the table. So it just makes it simpler to think about it. So it's mm -hmm. like the city. You know, I know. Pittsburgh Politically, and it's... Fairport. And, <laughs> and who knows, though? Maybe Pittsburgh and Fairport. So one thing that the... One thing, one thing that the Rochester City School District wanted to do when they designed their network that never got off the ground because they were never able to get grant money, if you want the gig service, you pay. Everyone else gets slower service for free. So perhaps connecting Pittsburgh and Fairport pays for the rest of the network to other yeah. people to get it for free. I mean, if those are the kinds of questions that you really have to ask. Um, the, the city school district and Marie Leonard, who is now the chief of staff but was the um, chief community technology officer, she really had a wonderful idea for how they could make this work. Um, for their students and how the network could pay for itself and the way that she wanted it to pay for itself was to charge businesses and homes who wanted to pay for gig service charge them but everyone else gets maybe 30 megabits per second which is plenty fast it is considered high-speed broadband um, and just let everyone else be on a network like that these are the kinds of creative solutions and innovative solutions that I believe this community has the wherewithal to come up with but it's as I said, there are a number of bar there are a number of barriers, and most of them are political. I don't believe the financial is a barrier, to be honest with you. We throw so much money around this community yeah. on other things, roads, for example. I mean, this this month in the county legislature, I mean, I think we're approving twenty million dollars in road projects. You could you could whack off uh, a, uh, a a Wi-Fi network for twenty million dollars pretty quickly, right? But nobody, but people would people would say, oh my gosh, that's People, people's brains are just not, we're not wired to think about internet as an infrastructure project, and, but it is. It is. Any other questions? Thoughts? Well, you yeah. said we have the fiber lines already set up. Then can't we, isn't it a lot cheaper to connect to what we already have? It should be, but first that network needs to be unified and upgraded into a form that we can jump on. Mm -hmm. Right now, no one can really connect to that network because it's just disparate all over the county. And even the county can't connect to all its own network. Oh. It's just, it's not, it needs to be upgraded and unified. And once we do that, which probably needs to be done at a pretty penny, I don't know the cost, but it's definitely in the millions. But once we do that, I believe then you, then you start talking, the sky is the limit. The previous county administration wasn't interested because they felt, well, first of all, I mean, I, I just don't think they were interested in it, but they, they, they put, where, where I read the Magellan study and saw a lot of possibility, they read it and only saw barriers. Barriers, barriers to everything. And I saw lots of possibilities. Is that $3 million operating cost, does that cover just like equipment maintenance or also things like tech support, like if my internet Yeah, I'm assuming goes. all that, I'm assuming tech support as well, not just maintenance. I mean, someone has to operate that network, you know. Um, yeah. How about a pilot project? That would be wonderful. I think that would be so great, right? Uh, I think they should do it in my neighborhood. Yay! Uh, I think Wi-Fi, <laughs> with the proper, uh, it doesn't go as far as cell phone towers, so you'd have to have more of these places, but I mean, I get, when I sign on to Wi-Fi, I see like 10 other mm -hmm. people, and all, they're almost always there, so there's a lot of it floating around. And I would 
would love to see that. And, and see every it. computer is Wi-Fi capable. Yep. So it's not a special, uh, you know, any special equipment. Yeah, and I, I all, and, and as far as public support goes, I think there already is public support, right? People hate their cable providers. Yeah. They hate their internet providers. Mm -hmm. yep. So when you frame it like that, like we're just we're trying to give people another choice. And remember too, for this Wi-Fi network, we can even make the Wi-Fi. You pay if you don't want to see ads, or you pay if you want faster. That's but you know, there are ways that you could structure any network that we build. There are ways we can structure it to bring in revenue from people who don't want to pay sixty-five dollars a month, but want quality Wi-Fi to a network that where people don't pay, and maybe it's not the best thing, but they're going to be able to download email, they're going to be able to do a research project, their, their kids are going to be able to do their schoolwork. And I've, in my experience, and it's never been contradicted, every McDonald's has Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. has free Wi-Fi. Yeah. And because McDonald's does, Burger King has to have free <laughs> Wi-Fi too. Yeah. And so does Starbucks. So yeah. it, there's a lot of that around. There is. I mean, the problem is, should people have to sit in the McDonald's to do their homework? No, no, I want yeah. to do this at home. So. Yeah. Correct. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. And we could give every household a password if necessary. I mean, there are just so many ways that we could do this. And I, I, I think that if we do something like this, you know, we could have the next George Eastman. We could have, um, we could have the next big inventor. In Rochester who's 10 years old right now and that kid um, is limited to his ability to explore because the library is closed at 6 p.m. yeah right. and um, or they're not open on Sundays mm -hmm. and I think um, kids curiosity uh, should they should be able to explore and be curious and, and, and develop and explore their own interests mm -hmm. so if a kid is interested in science should be able to go on the internet and explore science so I, I think, and, and I also really do believe there's an economic development component, which I didn't really talk about a lot because I really think we have to solve this first problem, but I think that people are paying too much for internet. <laughs> these businesses, these small businesses are paying way too much, these nonprofits are paying way too much, and we should have a mechanism. And it, think about how it would attract people to the city. And, and if you did have a pilot program in, say, Beachwood, maybe people would want to move to Beachwood and invest in Beachwood because you get free internet at Beachwood. And then you could expand that out to other neighborhoods. I just think the spillover effect to having um, to having free internet it would be extraordinary because again people hate the internet. As it grew, then you could tap into that yeah. fiber network that you have available mm -hmm. to increase your right. Your well, remember Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi is connected to fiber. Fiber mm -hmm. is always the backbone to Wi-Fi network. So we could use existing. We could use the so the city so that, for the last mile. You yes. Use the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So the, the city. Correct. The city of Rochester does not have its own fiber. It rents fiber uh, long-term leads with Crown Castle. I mean, the, the fiber you told us that is running it isn't used in the, no. all the se sewers. No, the city doesn't. The city's not on the network. City has its own network. Well, but the, my point is, you could you could enable that yep. network right there, and it just takes these routers, mm -hmm. uh, and the, you have to know what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you can just continue to build to put um, better and better Wi-Fi equipment on there to um, to boost it. Yes, it's it's really amazing what you can do, um, and I I'm just a, I'm just a big fan of doing something like this. I really believe the first step is a task force. If I can get that, and then be on the task force. Uh, if I can get that, then I feel like. Um, we can really force the conversation. I need people like way smarter than me uh, and on this task force to just how do we let's solve the problem? And we'll probably need to hire another consultant to figure out. Okay, let's upgrade this network. Uh, let's let's tie the network together. Um, I, I would really want to do it with the end goal of opening it up to the community. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't want to be part of something that stops with. I mean, although I think it's a worthwhile project to make a government internet network. <laughs> I, I still think that the end goal should be opening something up like that up to the public. We own it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, along with what you were saying about uh, involving people, which is one of the big, big pieces, is there could be some way we, you could come up with some interesting PR kind of stuff that's kind of fun and goes after spe uh, Spectrum or whatever. And then it's the meeting with neighborhood groups. And, we, and I, one of the things that's kind of changed a little bit in Rochester is it used to be 
uh, you know, some uh, associations that uh, kind of wore it out, and then it was uh, people with block clubs, you know. But what has happened more recently, because people are very angry with the city about development, so these, some of these neighborhood groups, some of which are new, some of which are joined with other block clubs, have taken, I think, a renewed interest. Uh, and you won't know that really until you actually sit down with them, you know what I'm trying to say? So it's not like you know, walk in a room and say, oh, well, I don't know. Um, but, um, and you know, like anything else, yeah, doing, uh, introducing this to people in a way that's that kind of maybe a little interesting, you know, has a little humor to it, or, you know, the ways to do this, and then working with neighborhoods about, you know, listen, you, this could save you money, this, this could do this, it, it kind of be some of the ways you were presenting it, which makes people more motivated because it's a personal, it's a face-to-face, -face, you know, oh, yeah. not overnight. You, you, obviously, you can't do these things, but an ongoing commitment, given what I just said about these neighborhoods, I think they're looking for, you know, this isn't easy to do, but you're, they're looking for something that continues to identify them as meaningful people, not just, oh, well, you're there, you get your trash, and please shut up the rest of the time. Uh -huh. You know, so, so, and it's a tricky piece to get this, but I think it's possible, it takes effort, it takes a lot of effort. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I agree yeah. with you. I agree with the idea. And the community engagement piece is huge, and it, um, it's huge, and it's it's not easy. It's why it's going to take lots of different people. But when I say stakeholders, I mean you're talking about government. Yeah. You're not just yeah. talking about the public. You're talking about a lot of different organizations, and and you all, you are talking about the big telecom. Let me tell you, they they'll fight something like this tooth and nail, yeah, and it will be very difficult. And I mean the city is already obstruct being very obstructionist towards any new technologies um, coming in. With the well, sometimes mission. that motivates these groups more. Right, because Verizon is suing the city because over its ordinance uh, about um, permits and fees, and uh, um, and Greenlight is also complaining about it. It we shouldn't be blocking new technologies uh, because in favor of just one company, which is kind of what I think they're doing. They get money from that certain company. Is that why they're doing it? Spectrum. Yeah, the franchise. Yeah, I'm not completely up on all of the um, ins and outs of the franchise agreement and what the city gets out of it, but it's pretty clear to me that the city isn't interested in competitive competition. Yes. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I really enjoyed um, giving this presentation. It's the first time I've done I've done this PowerPoint before. So I talk about this all the time. It's the first time I've ever uh, done this. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad we got this all figured out. Yeah. Yeah.